So we've now made it to part 3 in the Shader Notes tutorial series, kudos on you for sticking it out this far by the way, and because we are so deep into the series now, it probably makes sense to start talking about some nodes specifically. So in part 1 and 2 we just laid down some groundwork, but at no point did we just take a node and know everything about it, which is something that we want to do. We know how nodes interact together, we know a bit about material output, but we don't really know any other nodes specifically. So let's actually get started, and of course we need to set up our workspace, so shading workspace. And then as I always like to do, I'm just going to collapse this file browser. Bye bye Say goodbye to the image editor, and I hope you don't like the outliner too much because that is going too. Okay, viewport, shader editor, properties, we are pretty much set like we did in all the other tutorials. So like we said, this cube, which is geometry unlike this camera and this light, which so far don't have a material, this cube is geometry and therefore it gets its own default material, which is called material. We're just going to call it something else, like part 3, more creative names. And like we talked about, each material is really just a node network. So this cube has a material called part 3, it's the only material available. And that is just this node network that we get by default. And as we talked about, we get this very, very complex and giant node called the principled BSDF. And eventually we'll work our way up to this, but this just has so many sliders. And this is being connected to the material output in the surface slot. And like we said, this is what's being outputted to the material on the surface. So this is what we're seeing on the surface of this cube. It's only the exterior, the shell. So what we can do is basically take this node, this monstrosity, and replace it for something much, much simpler. And then all the other properties still apply. You know, we'd still have it connected to this material output, etc. So what we can do is we can either take this node and delete it with X, and then we're going to add in a node by either going to add and then we have all these menus or instead of doing that you can do the identical operation shift a so again the hotkey is shift a and we're going to be using this hotkey a lot so i do recommend memorizing that one although you should probably have it memorized because it's the same in other parts of blender so shift a to add and then for input so we're inputting in data and this time we're going to be using the value node so go to value and then click that and bring it in Okay, perfect. So now instead of this principled VSDF, we got something that is much less intimidating. It almost looks cute. It's just this value node, one slider, not a big deal. And upon further inspection, we look at this node, you see it has no inputs because this node is the input, there's nothing to input into it, this is the original data that we're going to start off with, and it does have a single output, which is this value. So the way we want to think about this is this node is storing a value, right now it's 0.5, we can make that 0.6, or we can just slide this around and pick a value. So this node is storing a number, so value means number, and then we can output it to, let's say, the surface like we've been doing. And you see that this actually became white, so it's actually responding to it. And if we start sliding around this slider, sliding it around, you can see that it's actually responding to this. So we have some node here that has data. Through this connection, it's being sent to the material output. And just to review, control right click to sever, and then alt right click to do lazy connection. So there we go. So what is this value node and what does it really mean? Well, of course, value is just a number. This node basically means number. There's not much to it. We can put in any number we want. We can put in a negative. We can put in a decimal 1.54, absolutely whatever we want, and that's really all it's storing. But you notice that it's actually changing the color of our cube, and there must be some rule that dictates this. Well, usually the best way to start investigating a node is just to mess around with this number. So probably the most sensical number to try out is zero. So when we type in zero, you're going to notice that this turns pitch black, and that is not a coincidence. So we know that when this node is zero, we get pitch black, and then when we bring this up, we get white, and it looks like it immediately turned to white, but if we just slowly do this, so instead of pulling the slider, we're going to hold down shift and then pull the slider for fine control. So again, I'm holding down shift, and you see that this is going from black to gray, and then it progresses towards white. And instead, if we start at zero and then head towards the negatives, it remains black, so nothing changes. So this indicates that zero is black and then positive values become more and more white. And generally when we're using this node, we usually stick between zero and one, although you can go higher, but that's usually the range we use. And there's reasons for that because usually we're using this value as a percentage, so 0% to 100%. But notice that when we have one, we have something that looks pretty white, but we can still progress above this and it gets a bit brighter. It's kind of hard to tell, but if we zoom in here, Really focus on how whitish gray this is, and then we're just going to pull this up. 
it's getting more white. So the way you want to think about this again is zero is black and then it kind of goes off into infinity where the higher you go the whiter it gets but once you get to like three you're not going to really notice anything higher. So here's the difference between three and six. It's very very minimal but you can notice it a tiny bit. So again we're going to be sticking between zero and one and that's just the done deal. So value node's pretty simple, stores a number, sends it, and it's represented as something between black and white with a bunch of different shades of gray in between. So if we take this node and duplicate it, again that's shift D, so shift D to duplicate, and let's do two copies, so another shift D, and we can make this a bit bigger since this is the main window we're going to be using. What we can do is each value node, they're not linked together obviously, you can see they are separate, they're not attached in any way, and each of these can store a different value. So for this one let's do 1, for this one let's do 0.5, which is halfway between 0 and 1 obviously, and then for this one let's do 0.25. Well, when we sever this one and then connect this one, we get something that's a bit grayer, or instead of severing, we can just connect it and it will replace it, and we get something that's even closer to black because these values are decreasing. So really make sure that you understand this because value is kind of the intrinsic element in nodes is a way to think about it. The same way that this world is made of atoms and those are made of quarks, this is the base unit for nodes. Okay, so we have these value nodes and we've been switching between them, but we want a way to do this faster instead of just you know switching between them or severing connections and then doing lazy connections there's actually a faster way to switch between these and i'm pretty sure this is a node wrangler feature so again make sure you have node wrangler enabled and what we're going to do is instead of connecting we're going to hold down Control shift and then click the node so Control shift click and you see we get this intermediary node called the viewer and we can switch that so Control shift click click and you can see it's very quickly switching what's being inputted and it's basically being routed through what's called an emission node and right now you don't need to worry about what emission means we'll eventually go over it but right now since the strength is one you want to think of this as a intermediary node that doesn't do anything so this is just a quick way to switch between these and again we can really see how this is very bright and then going to darker and then going to even darker so now we can quickly switch between these and i guess that's pretty much all there is to talk about with the value node i mean we we can do some math with them before we wrap up, that might be a good idea. So again, since these just store numbers, what can you do with numbers? Well, you can add them, subtract them, multiply them, even divide them, and that's what we can do in this node editor. So shift A to add a node, or go to add, and then we're going to go to converter this time, and choose math. So in this episode, we've already talked about the value nodes, and we're also now going to talk about the math node. And the way you want to think about this is the math node has two inputs, an A and a B, and we do something to those. So we can either add those, we can subtract those, we can, whoops, don't want to enable that yet. We can multiply those, we can divide those, bunch of other stuff, but right now let's just do some simple addition. So since these are numbers, what we want to do is just plug them in. So let's say we want to add one, and let's say 0.5. Well, right now this math node has 1.5 and it's adding them, so you want to think that internally this is storing 1.5, and just like we did last time, we can take this and put it in our surface, or Control shift click and now this is going through our viewer, and let's actually see what this is doing. So since this is adding these two values, if we decrease one of these values, the sum is going to be smaller. So instead of 1 plus 0.5, let's do 0.5 plus 0.5. And this gives us something slightly darker, because the sum isn't as big of a number, so it's not going to be as bright a white. So if we do this as 0, now we have 0 plus 0.5, which is 0.5, and we get this perfect gray. And notice that if we make this value 0.5, and now we're going to be switching between this math node and this value node. Both of these are 0.5, so this is the sum that equals 0.5, and this is just 0.5 as a number. If we switch between these, you're not actually going to notice any kind of difference at all because they are storing the same value. If we make this even smaller, so if we do negative 0.5, they're going to sum to 0, and that should give us perfect black. So let's see if that's the case. There you go. They give us perfect black. If we change this to multiplication, Let's have this one be 0. So now we have 0 times a number, which of course is going to be 0, no matter what the second value is. So notice that if we slide this around, we're always going to get black because the multiplication will always be 0. If we do 1, this is always going to be, again, it's 1 times this number, which is this number, because multiplying by 1 doesn't do anything. So sliding this around is going to affect stuff, but it's going to be equivalent to just doing it from here. So now we have the viewer going to here. So it doesn't matter that we still have this multiply set up. It's not going to our surface, so we're not seeing it. 
So there you go, that's a bit of math. And then I guess the only other thing you wanna know about this math node, I mean, other than all these settings, which we'll eventually go over, but instead of just multiplying, dividing, subtracting, and adding, there's one other thing about this node, which is clamp. And you might be wondering what clamp even does. So to illustrate what this does, we're gonna set this to add. So switch this to add, and let's add one and 1.4 is fine, and then connect this with control shift click. Or again, we can just do our lazy connection. So right now this is outputting 2.4, which is a pretty bright white, and we can make this even more extreme. So let's do something like this. So now we have 14.1, which should be extremely, extremely white. It doesn't get much worse than this. Not that it's really a bad thing. Well, what clamp does is instead of just passing this number through, so instead of passing 14.1, what enabling clamp does is it's gonna take our value and put it between zero and one. So if we have something that is above one, like 14.1, it's just gonna go directly to one. If you have something that's under zero, it's gonna go directly to zero. So effectively by enabling clamp, which we can do now, we are getting rid of negative numbers, since you can't go below zero, and we're getting rid of any number that is above one. So it's just bringing our range to between zero and one. And you may be thinking, why is this useful? And we'll eventually get into it, but let's actually notice what's happening here. So if we disable clamp, we're getting 14.1, which is this very bright white. But then when we enable clamp, again, it's above one, so it's gonna be mapped to one, and that is turning out to be more gray because it's not as big of a value. So let's see that again, boom. We can also do this with negative numbers, no reason to not do it. So let's do multiplication and let's have negative one times 13.1, which is negative 13.1. But of course this is being clamped, so it goes directly to zero. So even if we disabled this, it's still gonna be black because anything under zero is black. So you really wanna make sure you're understanding how math works here. And of course we can chain these things up. So let's do one and 13.1, and we'll keep it as is, so we're not gonna clamp it. So right now this is storing 13.1 is the way you wanna think about this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this node, shift D to duplicate, and since we wanna add this to the chain, a trick that's actually pretty useful is instead of putting this here and then connecting it, etc. What we can do is duplicate and just put it right on this connection, which will automatically connect it for us. So this is just a quick shortcut. So here we have 13.1 that's being sent over here, and then we're gonna take this value and multiply it. So the way you wanna think about this is 13.1 is stored here, and then it reaches this node where we have 13.1 times 0.5, so we should have, what is that, 13.1 times 0.5 is 7.55, maybe that's correct. If we multiply this by zero, it's gonna give us black. So even though this was a very large value, immediately it's canceled out. If we add zero, what do you expect to happen? Well, it's gonna be very bright because we have 13.1 plus zero gives us, you know, 13.1, which is a very bright number. And it's kind of weird to think about it. It is a bright number. And I guess there's also dark numbers. And you can keep chaining these math nodes as much as you want. And you can do different functions. So instead of just what we've been doing, you can do, I don't know, the sine function. We're not gonna talk about this yet, but you can do that. And that is pretty much all I wanna talk about. So we have the value node, and I guess also a bit of the math node that has a bunch of settings to it, so we're gonna explore that more. So make sure that you understand that the value node is just storing a number, so it's pretty much the number node, and how that is represented in the surface. So again, let's delete these with X, and then bring this over, Control shift click to view it. So again, zero is black, anything under zero is black, and then we just progress, and as we get bigger, in the positive direction, we're gonna get brighter and brighter whites. And then there's also clamping, multiplying, all that. But hopefully you understood this. And in the next one, we're gonna be combining value nodes to actually create color. So we're not just doing grayscale from black to white, but we can get red, blue, purple, even magenta, if that is something you want. So hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you over on part four and good for you for learning shader nodes. Still proud of you, bye-bye.